Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Try again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends of the late Brother Luke. My name is Lee McMaster and I'm the college principal of St Gregory's College. And on behalf of Brother Peter Carroll, Provincial of the Marist Brothers, Province of Australia, Brother Brian and the brothers of the St Gregory's College community here at Campbelltown, and Brother Luke's relatives, I welcome you all here this morning. Welcome to this mass of celebration and thanksgiving for the life of our brother Luke, known to many of you as simply Luke and to others as Jack or Uncle Jack. I want to acknowledge and welcome brother Luke's 96-year-old sister, Mari Perrett, and her family, along with his nieces, nephews and their families. We are grateful that you are all with us this morning to celebrate the life of an outstanding man. To the large number of Maris brothers present today and to Brother Luke's many friends, colleagues, past students, former brothers and fellow Maris, many who are unable to be present due to the COVID restrictions but are present with us today via our live streaming. I'd like to thank you all for honouring Brother Luke with your presence and celebrating with us this mass of thanksgiving for the gift of his life. It is significant that we celebrate the Mass of Thanksgiving today in the hall named after Brother Luke. This hall will forever be a place where the community of St Gregory's College gather to celebrate a vast array of events and ceremonies, always knowing that Brother Luke contributed close to 75 years of his life to this community. This is a phenomenal achievement and one which will be part of the college history and folklore forever. It's also significant today that we have present in our congregation the young men of St Gregory's College who stand on the shoulders of Brother Luke's hard work and passion in terms of the agricultural life of this college. Brother Luke's indomitable spirit will live on through these young men and the young men who will follow them as they carry on the legacy of his outstanding work over the past 70 plus years. If I asked each of you to describe Brother Luke in just one word or a phrase or a single story, I wonder what you would say. I'm certain we all have our own distinctive memories and multiple stories about Brother Luke. Our own brother Brian, our community leader of the brothers here at St Gregory's, penned some reflective words about Brother Luke. He said, the words that come to mind for me in describing Luke are his vibrant presence expressed in his relationships. He was present in the reality of his, his relationships with himself, creation, others and with God. He was a gracious gentleman. He was always welcoming of, of, of others. Luke sought to empower others through his active listening and his companionship, com compassionate hospitality. Luke had a heart full of gratitude for all who had supported, prayed and cared for him during his time of infirmity right up until his passing last Friday week. We are all gathered here today as witnesses to Brother Luke's expression of God's unconditional love in our lives. Let us, give let us give thanks for Brother Luke's life and legacy, so faithfully lived out in the way of Mary as a Marist brother for almost 78 years. We pray his gentle soul may receive and enjoy the gift of eternal life with our infinite God of love, our good mother Mary, St Marcelin Champagne, and St Gregory. Our presider for our Mass today is Father Paul Maunder, the scaled Carmelite friar and a great friend of the brothers. And can celebrating with, brother, with Father Paul today is Father David Cattrall, the parish priest of St Mary MacKillop Catholic Parish at Oran Park. I'd ask you all now to please kindly stand for our entrance hymn, Christ Be Our Light.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to simply say that it's a great privilege for myself, and no doubt Father David, also uh, to celebrate this Requiem Mass for this a great, uh, this, uh, this lovely man and this dear friend. As we enter into the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our unworthiness and the waters of baptism that flowed upon Luke. In the waters of baptism, Luke died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Please be seated. My name is John Smythe. There's no second guesses as to who I was named after. Uh, we're here to farewell a much-loved member of our families. Brother Luke, or Jack, as he is known in the Smythe family, first came to my attention when I was about four. He was on one of those infrequent visits home since becoming a Marist brother. His father had died when Jack was a boy and his visits home always generated a huge amount of joy and happiness. I'm certain his mother considered the sun and the stars, got the light from him. His siblings idolised him and he is revered by many, many nieces and nephews. On this particular occasion, he and my father were walking the family farm with me tagging at their heels in bare feet trying to dodge the prickles. They were totally immersed in each other's company until they realised my discomfort and Jack hoisted me onto his shoulders. As I grew to know Jack, it became very evident he had another family. 
the Marist Brotherhood and all that goes with it. He was, his was a wonderful vocation of devotion and service, especially to St Gregory's and all the boys who went through here. His love of the place and his interest and care in its students and boarders in particular could hardly be measured. His recall of them and their families, going back generations in some instances, was amazing. He truly was a man of faith, a family man, a man of the land, and thanks for the memories, Jack. God bless you. Thank you, John, for your very kind and wise words about your uncle. It is an honour and a privilege for me to be invited to pay tribute to the life of our friend and brother, Luke Smythe. It's also a rather daunting task to try to do justice to such a long and well-lived life, particularly given the directions that Luke gave me. He wanted two things from his eulogy. It was to be simple and it was to be short. <laughs> I can't guarantee either. <laughs> May I begin by extending my sympathies and those of the wider Marist community to Luke's family and friends, in particular to Mari and to Tom and to all his nieces and nephews and the grand nieces and nephews. To the doctors, nurses and carers who cared for his physical needs, particularly in these last months, we say thank you. To the priests, brothers and friends who shared his spiritual and emotional journey home to his God, thank you. And to all of you here present today, thank you for being part of such an amazing life. Luke's earthly journey ended peacefully in the early hours of Friday the 26th of February in the presence of Brother Brian and his beloved nieces Gina and Sabine. He was just a month and a half short of his 98th birthday, but he died where he wanted to, at his home of 75 years, his beloved St Greg's. As we know, John Smythe was born on the 14th of April 1923, the third of Michael and Josephine Smythe's five children. His parents owned a mixed farm of 740 acres at Dookie in country Victoria and grew up on the far growing up on the farm fueled Luke's love of the land. His primary schooling took place at a one-teacher school at Yabba North. And John, or Jack as he was known to the family, found schoolwork hard. He was much more interested in helping with the animals or working in the wheat fields. Knowing her son was not academically inclined, his mother decided to send Jack to St Gregory's College, which advertised itself as the Catholic College for the farmer's son. And so Luke's association with this college began when he started here, first year here in 1938, just 12 years after this college was founded. During that year and under the prompting of Brother William Malloy, Luke began to consider a vocation as a Marist brother. And so in January 1939, rather than returning to St Greg's, Luke began his Marist journey at the Junior at Mittagong. And for the next four years, he continued to struggle with his school work before attempting and failing the leaving certificate. However, the Morris superiors could see his potential and accepted him into the next stage of training at the novitiate. And in July 1943, he received the habit of the Morris brothers and was given the religious name of Brother Luke. 
So he was christened John, known as Jack, and became Luke. And to countless old boys, they knew him as Tex. No wonder he could be confused at times. As brother Luke, he took on... He, went on to take his first vows in July 1944 and was then appointed for six months back to his alma alma mater here at St Greg's. In 1945, he went to Hamilton in Newcastle for a year of teaching. 46 to 48 saw him back at St Greg's doing the usual round of teaching, boarding, sports, coaching and farming. The year 1949 saw Luke appointed to Bondi Beach, the rooster's heartland to teach in the school and study agriculture two nights a week at Sydney Tech. Then in 1950, after his final profession, Luke was reappointed to St Gregory's, where he was to remain for the rest of his long life. All up, he has spent 75 of his 78 years of Morris life here at St Gregory's. In reflecting on this long period of Morris life, I was struck by the impact Luke has, was able to have on the lives of so many. The St Greg's Old Boys Facebook page is full of old boys acknowledging Luke's impact on them. And the size of the congregation and the distances that some people have travelled to be here is also a testament to this fact. But how and why was Luke able to make such a difference? In lots of ways, the answer is simple. He was true to himself and taught by example. He put into practice the college motto, and like the good farmer he was, sowed the right seeds. By his example, he sowed the seeds of positivity, graciousness, adaptability, hard work, kindness and humour. His fingerprints can be found all over this great college as he was involved in many of the projects that have shaped the look and feel of the college today. The playing fields, swimming pool, chapel, the pastures, the now defunct Rodeo grounds, even the classroom blocks all benefited from his hard work and eye for detail. For me, his most notable foray into improving the college's facilities came in 1970. The headmaster at the time, Brother Anselm, was dying in hospital of cancer. So, as the scripture says, the lot fell on Luke to oversee the last stage of the college's building plan. This involved the demolition of an old fibro dormitory and classroom block to make way for what was the Lavalla room near the boys canteen. Luke was quite certain the crew that had been employed for, to do the demolition work was too slow and was probably ripping us off. So he sacked them and decided he'd do the job himself. <laughs> Using a tractor he thought he would be able to pull the old building down. Unfortunately for him they built things to last in those days and the building wasn't going anywhere. What to do? Easy remedy. He burnt the thing to the ground. <laughs> Others recall Brother Seenan standing at the window of Bag Galley House, huffing and puffing, trying to blow the smoke and flames away, worrying that the fire would spread and destroy the brother's house. Luckily, the house survived and, and the new building was constructed on the site of the old dorm block. As you can imagine, a lot changed over the course of Luke's time. Change didn't daunt him, and he readily adapted and looked for new ways to make a contribution. When the dairy closed, he swapped to raising beef cattle. When most of the farm was sold for urban development, he set up a nursery to provide plants for the new suburb. In recognition, excuse me, in recognition of his contribution to the life of the college and the respect and admiration in which he was held by the college community, this hall was named in his honour. He did have one slight drawback, though, which Mr Master might like to keep in mind. 
that a few students over the years were surprised to find out that Brother Luke's surname was indeed Smythe. They just presumed that seeing it was the Brother Luke Hall, that his surname was Hall. (laughs) When asked about the secret of his long life, Luke would normally reply with a smile and uh, that there was no real secret, just keep breathing. On more serious occasions, he would reflect that it was his relationship with God and with others that kept him going. Throughout his life, he kept a focus on Jesus and Mary. Each day for him started and ended with time in the chapel for prayer. Long hours on the tractor and in the fields gave him time to reflect and nurture his relationship with God. His relationship with others was all about doing good quietly. Luke lived out the Maris characteristics of presence, simplicity, family spirit, and love of work, all done in the way of Mary. He was, in many ways, a gentle man, but always a true gentleman. He put people at ease and made them feel welcome be they visitors, old boys, staff or students. He was always gracious in his dealings with others and people felt comfortable in his presence. Luke was a simple man in the best meaning of the word. He was never one for the accumulation of possessions and preferred to wear things out rather than throw them out. Like most farmers, he would make do with what was available often recycling things before it became a fashionable practice. He displayed an enormous capacity for and a great love of work. Luke took God's call for stewardship of the land seriously. He showed himself to be a knowledgeable and thinking farmer who read and consulted others on best farming practice, always trying to improve so that the farm would be the best training ground he could make it for the students at the college. The long hours and hard physical work came at a cost to him. In 1960, he spent the year in a brace for back problems. Then there was the arthritis, the knee and hip replacements, and a a heart pacemaker. All of these types of injuries and illnesses can partly be blamed on the wear and tear he placed on his own body over the years. Yet he loved the work and found it frustrating when, as the years progressed, he couldn't do as much as he wanted to. Luke was very proud of his family. He kept in regular contact with them and delighted in their many successes. In return, he felt loved by them as a brother, uncle and friend. His St Gregory's family revered him as their patriarch and senior statesman. Old boys, present students, staff, both old and new, regarded him as a wise counsellor and a font of historical knowledge. He was blessed with a great memory and old boys were often amazed at how many names and events he could recall, all of which made them feel special. Yet it was in community with, the Maris, with his Maris family that he felt most at home. He loved the brothers and loved being part of a community. He was a keen participant in all community activities and his wit and good humour enlivened many of our gatherings. He was also blessed with a wonderful sense of humour. Let's face it, anyone who supported the Roosters for so long needed to have a good sense of (laughs) humour. This (coughs) humour brought a lightness to his dealings with others and helped him to appreciate that life was to be enjoyed. And he was not averse to playing the occasional practical joke on others, such as jumping out of the darkness to scare an unsuspecting passerby, or announcing to a harassed headmaster on the day the boarders returned at the start of the year that you'd forgotten to tell him that he had enrolled the son of an old boy and that an extra bed would be needed to be found for the dorm. The headmaster was less than amused. 
and even more so when he found out it was not true and that Luke was just trying to get a rise out of him. He succeeded. succeeded. <coughs> in announcing Luke's death to the brothers, our provincial brother Peter Carroll wrote the following words, which I hope he doesn't mind me quoting. Bad luck, Pete. Facing your own death isn't easy, even for a man of advanced age and great faith. Over the last months, Luke, Luke experienced his own anxiety. However, he gradually let go and entered a period of resignation and peace. I was fortunate to spend some time with Luke in the week before his death. Though weak, he was aware and responsive. I was able to thank him for being a fine brother to so many. He was able to smile and laugh a little. He was as gracious and grateful as ever. He repeated his phrases, thank you and God bless you. He was most appreciative of the care given him by Dr Goyle, the nurses and brothers. Each evening for the last month, the brothers gathered around Luke's bed to pray the rosary. This was a comfort and consolation, <clears throat> and he was able to join in the simple prayer that he loved so much. And so Luke's earthly journey comes to an end with this rite of Christian burial. We've all been enriched by having Luke Smythe as our brother and friend. May his memory and example continue to brighten and strengthen our lives as we move forward to face the challenges of life. Well done, good and faithful. Enjoy the just rewards of your years of sowing the good news. Go now, rest in peace. Please remain seated as we pray. All loving God, we pray for our brother Luke, who responded to your call to give up himself to others by following Jesus in the way of Mary and Marcelin as a Marist brother. May those whose lives have been touched by his be able to respond as generously as he did in all circumstances of life. We pray that you will welcome Luke home and take him into your loving care forever. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the Saviour we are waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will transfigure these wretched bodies of ours into copies of his glorious body. He will do that by the same power with which he can subdue the whole universe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you, like a dry, weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise, shall praise you with joy. You have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. My soul is thirsting for you, the Lord. Jesus Christ. Come, you, my love, and bless us, O Lord. Very early, you, and bless us, O Lord. Very early, you, and bless us, O Lord. 
praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognising him. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing, then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us, as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Did not our hearts burn within us? At the heart of every religious vocation, there surely lies an experience such as this. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us? I myself remember having felt this call when about 15 years of age, as by my bedside lamp, I read Fulton Ausler's The Greatest Story Ever Told, the story of Jesus. Who can capture or describe the sweetness of such a grace for a young man or woman searching for meaning and direction at this critical moment of their lives? Such as these know by experience what John, the beloved disciple, felt when Jesus spoke to his heart the irresistible words, come, follow me. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Without a doubt, Luke Smythe experienced this call early in his life and over the years, It deepened as Jesus spoke with him and explained the scriptures to him. For what else gave him the will and the power to turn his back on the good things of the earth and walk the seven miles, or in his case, 70 miles to Jerusalem, where his beloved Saviour was crucified for love of him? For it is almost impossible, our Holy Mother St. Teresa said, that is, we Carmelites call call her our Holy Mother, 
It is almost impossible to have enthusiasm for great things unless at the beginning we see the money in our hands, so to speak. And such was the agreement Jesus made with Peter when asked by Peter, Lord, what's in it for us? We have left everything and followed you. Jesus replied, I tell you solemnly, there is no one who has left house, brothers, sisters, father, children, or land for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not be repaid a hundred times over now and in the world to come eternal life. Luke certainly experienced then this superabundance in this life, even in regard to the land. But let us not fail to note that when those disciples returned to Jerusalem, they found Peter and the eleven together with their companions. Without a doubt, among those companions was Mary, our good mother. So with Peter and the companions, Mary, our good mother, and that company, we can imagine a very intimate and marist scene, the community of Luke. But lest we peeve Luke by over eulogizing him, let us give him the only title that matters in the end. There is simply no greater nor beautiful title we can give him than to say he was a sinner who received God's grace and mercy. I feel sure that he would be happy with me saying this. And in this I seem to hear him say with St. Peter, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well, when Peter had refused to be washed by the Lord. And with St. Paul, there is, this is a saying you can rely on, and nobody should doubt that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I myself am the greatest of them. Thank you, Luke, and may God be with you always and you with us through our journey. And brothers and sisters, we'll now have the prayers of intercession. So please remain seated. And I'll call the readers forward. In faith, we have gathered here to celebrate the life of our brother Luke, who committed himself to live the gospel of Christ as the little brother of Mary in the spirit of Marcelin Champagne. We ask the risen Christ to bring him to himself. Lord, grant eternal peace to our brother Luke. Forgive him his faults and grant him that peace that comes from at last being with you forever. Lord, hear us. Luke influenced the lives of many people in various spheres of life as brother and friend. May we be inspired to live the values of the gospel which he demonstrated in his life. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Luke's family and friends, especially his sister Mari and his brother Tom. May we all be comforted in our sorrow by the God who brings consolation and peace through the life of his son, Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the deceased members of the Smythe family, especially Luke's parents, Josephine and Michael, his sister, Wynne, and his brother, Mick. May they welcome Luke into paradise. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, bless those who cared for and visited Luke, particularly during the, his last months of his life. May they all be rewarded for their generosity, sensitivity, love and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for the Maris brothers, especially the province of Australia. May Mary, our good mother and ordinary resource, and St. Marcelin continue to guide the brothers and the Maris family in their endeavours. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy. God, our comforter and strength, hear these prayers we offer for our brother Luke and grant him the fullness of redemption. Through, grant these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll now receive your gifts at the altar. to do this to you. got the missile, haven't you? Yeah. Is it the shore? I can't see it. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
on top of these things. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the gifts we offer in faith and love. May this Eucharist bring us to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just be seated for a moment, a little bit of a hitch. Luke won't mind. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Luke, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Marcelin, Saint Gregory, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And without touching one another, let us offer the sign of peace. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Let's stop. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
And let us pray. Lord, you give us life in this sacrament. May our brother Luke, who received life at your table, enter into the everlasting peace and joy of Christ your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Friends, in expressing my appreciation, I am also speaking on behalf of Brother Luke's family. Luke's illness was comparatively short, but he and the brothers have received wonderful support from so many people. This especially includes the healthcare team, led by clinical nurse manager Catherine Bridge and all the nurses and carers at Malloy House here at Campbelltown. In our healthcare team at Malloy House, we have unsung, underestimated, unappreciated heroes who are often overlooked and overdue for the kind of recognition that is befitting champions. I would also like to express my sincere personal gratitude to Dr Satish Goyal, who has been Luke's GP for more than 20 years. Thank you, Dr Goyle, for your outstanding care and for your generosity of time in caring for our brother Luke. It has been exceptional and certainly has not gone unnoticed. We, and more importantly Luke, relish the care and personal friendship extended by Dr Goyle. My thanks to our presider, Father Paul Munda, for your availability and your encouraging words. As Michael said, Paul has been a great supporter of the brothers here at St Gregory's for many years, and particularly to Luke. To our concelebrant, Father David, Parish Priest at Oran Park, thank you very much for your presence here today. I would be remiss not to express immense appreciation to Mr Lee McMaster, Principal of St Gregory's College, for his active support of our brother's community and for the generous assistance of the college family for all their support of Luke and the brothers during his illness up to and including this Mass today. Lee, I really appreciate you taking, your, taking the time out of your busy schedule to assist me in planning the arrangements for Luke's Mass and funeral. Your kindness and sensitivity and that of the whole college community has been truly outstanding and is a real tribute to Luke. To Luke's nieces, Sabine and Gina, we were so blessed to have you with us through some of the difficult times of the three weeks when Luke was in palliative care. On behalf of our community, my deep gratitude. A special acknowledgement is also due to my fellow brothers who have been so compassionate to Luke. They have been involved in his care up to and including the organisation of this celebration. The Maris Brothers community would also like to express sincere thanks to the many family members, other Marist brothers and friends of our dear Luke for the many letters, emails and phone messages we have received following his death. It was such a comfort to know that he had touched so many lives. We greatly appreciate these messages of condolence. And of course... Thank you to all of you for making the effort to be present this morning. Brother Luke was a great yet humble man who has touched all of us in so many different ways. Let us acknowledge him as the source of bringing us together today and may his memory inspire us for the future.
Uh, brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take our leave of our brother Luke. And may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And we remind ourselves once again of Luke's baptism into the mystery of Christ. And of the prayers of Christ and the saints ascending to the Father above. The saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, Luke, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Luke in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you gave to Luke in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, listen to our prayers Open the gates of paradise to your servant Luke and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we meet in Christ and are with one another, one with you and our brother Luke forever. In peace, let us take our brother Luke to his place of rest. New and eternal Jerusalem. May the angels greet you, and with Lazarus, who once was poor, may you have eternal rest. <laughs>